Hello, this is the Slothy Llama Podcast, and I am Reva G. This podcast is largely about all things mindfulness and, in general, how to find more enjoyment out of life. I hope you'll enjoy this episode. Hi, everyone. This is Reva G. So, I'm very excited because this is officially the first episode of the Slothy Llama podcast. I thought for the first episode, I would just do a general overview of what's to come and essentially where I'm going with all of this. To start, I have no intention of having any set date or schedule for when I release episodes. It's just going to be whenever I feel like it, essentially. And I don't plan on editing anything. Uh, I'm doing that for two reasons. One is I wanted to make this as easy as possible so that I could keep doing it and enjoy it. And the other reason is, in a way, a practice for me to get more comfortable with accepting that I can release things that are not perfect. (laughs) I think it's important for me to practice what I preach in all this. If I'm telling everyone to go easy on themselves and accept themselves for who they are, I should probably do the same thing. So since I don't want to edit myself in real life, I'm going to keep myself unedited for this show. And we'll see how that goes. (laughs) Hopefully it'll just be fun. (laughs) So, okay, here's my, here's my whole aim with this. I have finally come up with ways that I I'm able to have a much more clear mind and be so much happier each day and enjoy all of the experiences that I have in life so much more fully. And I want to help other people be able to do that for themselves because it's just changed my life so much. This is kind of coming from a number of factors and things that have happened in life. Uh, To make a long story short, for the past several years, through a number of conversations with people who have found a, a, a good amount of success for themselves in life and reached very prestigious positions and essentially they've done well, one of the things that they seem to regret the most as they come to the end of their careers had been not making the most of the time that they had with their loved ones. That was the regret that they had. It was that they just didn't make more time to do the things they cared to do with the people they wanted to spend their time with. And that, with a number of factors that I'll go into for future episodes, really stirred something in me and made me want to assess how I've been approaching my own life. A lot of people who know me, or if you don't know me, then here's some background. I've always been someone who's super passionate and loving and filled my schedule to the brim all the time, constantly. So if it's not work, it's everything else in life that's going on. And it was just... I was constantly busy and I was pushing myself to extremes. I did everything I planned to do, but I'd be exhausted and I'd be very limited on time to do just random fun things. It was always, you know, for a reason, for something logical or for something that I could convey, I could um, convince myself that was important or was going to help me get to the next step in career or something in life. And that was where my focus was constantly. It's just like, what's the next thing that I need to do for work or the next step to continue growing? And it was, it was just really overwhelming. And I would 
end up with these days I was working for several days straight, not not knowing that I'd even come home one night or something, and it was just getting ridiculous. <laughs> So I I knew it was important that I reevaluated what I was doing with my time and and why I thought it was so important and what was important. And I I just finally asked myself at the end of time what were the things that I would regret the most if I didn't do them. And I I can honestly say now that I would regret most not taking the time that I had to spend with the people that I care about, to really be present with them and to just enjoy living life with them. I know that is the thing that I would regret the most if I didn't start doing that with my life now. I know I wouldn't I honestly wouldn't regret missing a single class, a single assignment or project or deadline. None of that would really bother me at the end of time. I would just, that would be fine. I could accept that, but it would really, really hurt me to have to look back on my life and go, I wish I had spent more time with the people that I love and more time giving myself the opportunity to actually live life. None of us really knows how long we're going to be here and how long we'll have to enjoy our lives with the people that we care about, friends, family, and just have the experiences that we want. I still enjoy work. I still find fulfillment in doing work, but that's not my whole life. That's not all of who I am. There's so much more. And I was defining myself so rigidly as, as whatever it was that I was doing for work and it wasn't healthy and it wasn't making me completely fulfilled or happy. I just wasn't aware of it for a really long time. And I'm very fortunate that I've had a number of friends and family and loved ones who have been very patient with me as I've come to this realization in my life now. And I I'm not going to get down on myself for not making the choice to spend time with people I care about and giving myself more freedom in the past because that's in the past. What I can do now, though, is I can incorporate changes and ways of living life that I want to I want to have and just do that going forward because I... I now know a lot more clearly what I want, and I know that through the countless hours of audiobooks and podcasts and all sorts of things for learning how to become more mindful, how to clear my head, how to enjoy life, what is that, what does that even mean, and so many things. And it took me a really long time. I definitely was never someone who could just sit and do yoga and meditate like right off the bat. That sounded insane to me. I could not for the life of me understand those people. I, I, I knew that I needed to get a clear mind to be able to start to be more present in each moment, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. That was a little bit tricky for me. I had the racing thoughts. I had the self-doubt. I had this nagging voice in my head that was telling me I was wasting time because I was just sitting there and I wasn't doing the millions of things that I thought I needed to do. And I just, I was, I was unable to grasp why anyone would even bother sitting there to get this still mind that might never come and you know what was the point and all of that and so I had tried a lot of different approaches to figure out what worked for me I've since come up with solutions and come up with ways of approaching clearing my mind and I'm happy to say that I finally figured that out but I know there's a lot of other people who haven't they're still stuck in this process of focusing on everything else that they maybe don't genuinely care about. 
and they don't know how to stop that pattern. And they also are very anxious, stressed out with what's going on in the world right now. It's understandable. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of anger between people for whatever one person thinks versus another. And at the end of the day, if you truly want to be happy, it's up to you to figure out how to rewire your mind and how to train yourself to be happy because being happy really is a choice. You can choose to be happy. And I hated people who said this before because it just drove me up the wall to have someone tell me, Oh, you know, just choose to be happy. Don't mind that bill that's sitting there and those other like number of projects and the laundry that's piling up and the car is broken down and this other thing that's happened. Don't worry about any of that. You know, just choose to be happy. And I, I was like, what does that even mean? Choose to be happy. And I understand now it really is a choice. You can look at a situation and decide that you're going to experience it in a good way and focus your attention on the good aspects instead of paying attention to the not so great ones and have an overall good experience and be happy. And you can do that a lot more than you'd think. I, I am a very good example of someone who was constantly thinking and not able to sit down and just take a break for five minutes. And I am now able to do that successfully. And I want to be able to help other people who have been in that position, who want to be happy for most of the time and enjoy their lives more. I want to help them be able to do that because I know, I know I can now that I've figured it out for myself. And I've, I've kind of come up with a general sense of how I, how I understand life to be. I really do believe is we can use the analogy of an amusement park. So life is kind of like an amusement park by default. We're meant to really be happy. We're meant to just kind of wander around through life and just enjoy ourselves and be able to look at all of the experiences and, or at least a lot of the experiences that we have day to day and feel happy and just kind of embrace that. However, I, I do think that a part of life is having all of the experiences, the ones that we interpret as more negative or more upsetting or more frustrating, the ones that make us angry or sad. And and those are part of the experience of life, but, and they're like, it's like the rides in the amusement park. You're meant to go through the amusement park and enjoy the rides and at least experience the rides. Sometimes the rides are scary. You might not be having fun the whole time, but you're meant to go through the park, experience the different rides, and then you've had that experience, but it was only for a short period of time. Most of the time you just are happy and enjoying yourself. And then sometimes you end up in a situation where you have an argument with your kid or you have a fight with your significant other or your boss yells at you or you get fired or maybe someone gets in a car accident with you. Like there's so many different things that happen and those are the different rides that you go on in life, but they're just experiences and they're the ride only lasts so long. And the point is for you to have had the ride, experience it for what it was, and then be done and then go on to something else and go back to being happy and then try another ride and see how that experiences. What I'm trying to say is if you had a fight with your significant other or your manager yelled at you, experience the emotions of anger or confusion or <laughs> unhappiness or whatever it is in the moment for a short period of time, because then you've had the experience that was meant to come of that interaction that you didn't like so much, but it was just something you, you got to be exposed to, but that's all you needed to do. You didn't need to hold on to it for weeks and months. You just needed to let it go after that. It didn't have to last that long. I don't, I, I'm terrified of roller coaster rides. 
I don't want to live on a roller coaster ride. I don't want to put myself on a roller coaster ride for like months. I just want to have had the experience and then I'm done. I'm good. I'm like, okay, check that box. <laughs> I now know what that feels like. I don't, I don't need to, to sit on it for a month. And yet we, we sit with these thoughts and it is by choice because no one's forcing us to think about these things. So you, you maybe had a fight with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Well, you don't have to keep reliving the fight for weeks and months. You can just stop after you've processed it and you've gone to whatever next stage after that. You don't have to have sleepless nights because your boss yelled at you or put you down in a meeting. It doesn't help you to keep rehashing those thoughts in your mind all night long and keep bringing up the thoughts of how you felt in the moment and how awful it felt and how you don't, you don't think that highly of yourself now. And then, you know, you question what everyone else is going to think about you. None of that is necessary. You're just choosing to have these other thoughts and keep putting your attention all on these bad experiences and you're not letting it go. But really all that should have happened was you might've had an, a not so great experience. You've experienced it and then you're done. You just had it for what it is. But the problem is, and I had done this so much in the past too, is we have decided to hold on to these feelings for extended periods of time. And that's just not how we were supposed to do it. <laughs> At least if you want to have a happy life, if you find enjoyment out of, you know, constantly berating yourself with negative thoughts and putting yourself down and all of that, then by all means, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic. If that's your choice, that's fine and keep doing it. But if you really want to have a happy life, then it's up to you to start to see your experiences in life, like the roller coaster ride or the teacup ride. You, you see it for what it is. You feel the feelings and then you're done. I, I don't mean to suggest anything about you should 100% of the time be happy and everything should be perfect always. And if you just think about everything positively, then your world will be amazing because we all know that's not realistic. Even I, who is a very positive person and very realistic with that, I get it. Things happen in life. I think the pandemic has, has proven that pretty well. <laughs> Things happen. They're not in our control. And that's okay. They're going to happen. But like I said, you don't have to keep making it happen over and over and over and over again after it's happened. You just experience it for what it is and be done. And essentially what I'm hoping to accomplish with future episodes is helping everyone learn how to clear their minds and just be more happy and at the very least be more present for every experience that they have going forward and be able to just enjoy anything. It doesn't have to be a trip. It doesn't have to be winning the lotto. It doesn't have to be some, some big thing. It can just be taking a break. It could just be going for a walk when, when you have a break at work. It could be you know, getting to have a longer lunch with your significant other and just kind of taking that extra time and just be present with them and enjoy their time, the time that you have with them. If you're, if you go on a walk, you don't want to have your mind just churning all of these awful thoughts of like what people think of you or that you didn't turn this in, or you have all of these other things to work on and you're going to be up late doing this and, and so-and-so told you something that's not true and now you're mad at them and, or they're mad at you. That's not a peaceful walk. That's not refreshing and energizing. What you want to do is take a walk and then just exist and watch and look and take in all the beautiful things around you and have a chance to maybe just lay on the ground and look up at the clouds and look at how beautiful the sky is and just see all of the amazing things around you that you don't take advantage of every other day. Because that's just a better way of living. At least, again, if your goal is just to be happy most of the time, it's 
easy once you start to do it and you start to practice it and you start to get the hang of it. But it's it's not it's not always easy to make the initial shift. The initial shift. I can talk and say words. <laughs> but anyway, so what I am going to talk to you all about are a few steps that will get you in a place to do this, to live more mindfully, to have a clear mind and just, and find so much more fun and enjoyment. And most of the subjects I'll cover will essentially be on the topics of like clearing your mind. Of course, a big one is learning to love yourself, which might sound corny, but you really do need to learn how to love and accept yourself for exactly who you are right now. Not who you are because you have a title or because you are with a certain person or because of anything else you've ever done in life. Just because you are amazing. Because you are. You are an amazing individual. And you have to see that for yourself and, and know it just at the depths of your being, just know that you are amazing. I had a hard time saying nice things about myself for a lot of my life. <laughs> I can say just about anything super nice about everyone else. And that always made me happy. But I had a hard time accepting compliments. I had a hard time allowing myself to feel good about any kind of a, a success that I had because I'd be questioning if I could have done something else and done better, or maybe I could have done something more. And it was really difficult for me to just be able to accept myself for me. And I've finally learned how to do that. And I know that there's a lot of other people who haven't, and it does torment you and it'll just cause so much more anxiety and stress if you don't learn to actually love yourself. And if you can find a way to unconditionally love yourself, you will become so much better at conveying that to other people in your life. And you'll learn that that also gives you a way to stop judging people so much. You'll, it'll give you a, the ability to just, cause if you, if you can't even give yourself a break, how are you going to expect yourself to give other people a break? Now, I know in my situation, I was hard on myself, but nice to others, but there's a lot of people who are really hard on everyone else and expect a ton of stuff from everyone else and aren't so thrilled with how they're treating other people, but they don't know how to break out of that cycle. And a lot of the time it's a matter of they, they they haven't even learned how to fully accept themselves. So of course it's not unheard of that they, they can't quite comprehend to accept, like how to accept and just be supportive of other people around them. And there's nothing wrong with anyone in any of these situations. These are just things that we've developed over time in life. And it's just now if you've chosen to be happy and you've decided that this is what you'd like to do, there are ways to accomplish that and to get past ourselves. So that's the other thing, just learning to love yourself. And then the other topic would be kind of a combination of positivity and negativity. You got to learn how to let go of the experiences you dislike and the feelings that you get wrapped up in for those experiences. And then you have to learn to be able to choose a happier outlook when you enter a situation and hold on to that and use that to base your experience so that you're actually living mostly a happy life. And I, I really, I really hope that I'll be able to help a lot of people in doing that. So look out for future episodes. <laughs> and if you have anything in particular that you would like to hear about, or like a certain issue or something you want to have some feedback on or some suggestions or have me talk about how, how you might be able to handle that. Go ahead and send an email to ask sloppy llama at gmail.com. Or you could follow on Instagram. This is the first time I've ever used Instagram. So it's kind of interesting for me, <laughs> but I am, I am 
entertaining myself as I learn how to navigate that app. Uh, but go ahead and send me a message and I'm hoping I will figure out how to find where messages arrive in that app. <laughs> It'll be a good thing for me to practice. <laughs> But it's called, so if you want to message on Instagram, it is Slothy Llama Podcast. And I'll put this in the notes so that you can know where to contact us. But definitely share if there's any topics you want to hear about. And I am happy to share anything that I can to help. Also, coming in the future is going to be a really awesome intro music that Brian Garlow, my husband, is going to make. He is a fantastic musician, and he has promised me a really nice introduction of music. So I'm I'm super excited for that when that happens, and I will love to share it with all of you as well. So I think that's about all I had for today's episode. Some last words. Uh... The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Bye-bye.